Hi, welcome to the Beechcraft King Air 260 cockpit. In front of me here I have the Rockwell Collins Proline Fusion and I'd like to uh, start by just giving us a quick orientation of the layout of all the switches. So starting by the pilot's left shoulder here, we have our fuel panel. It has both the gauges for the main fuel tanks and the auxiliary tanks. Over by my left knee, I've got all of my master switches as, far as, as well as electrical switches. I also have my auto feather and anti-ice switches. Now, by my right knee, all grouped together are all of my lights and all of my pitot heats and other icing related switches. Continuing to the right, I have all of my environmental switches. Now, the flow is very, very simple, laid out for a single pilot operation so that I can reach everything I need at any given time. Speaking to that single pilot aspect, right up top we have our autopilot panel. Very easy to reach, very easy to use from a, a pilot's perspective. Front and center to the Proline Fusion here are 14 inch touchscreen displays. We have three of them in the cockpit. We have two PFDs, one for me the pilot and one for the co-pilot. And we have a multi-function display in the center. Any of these displays can be configured in a numerous, numerous types of ways. We can put anything from our FMS to our checklist to a chart. As simple as pushing a button here, we can have any chart that we'd like right on any screen that we desire. We also have systems types information and fuel planning and every other type of information that a pilot might need. One of the key improvements we've made recently to the King Air series is the addition of auto throttles to the platform. These are mainly controlled with our standby display unit, and this is how the pilot's gonna interface with them. We have various different modes. For the King Air, we have a torque mode, or we can choose a speed mode. It will also calculate your takeoff power setting for you. Now, in the event of a single engine situation, it will also stay engaged and give single engine protection in that event. So in that situation, the operating engine will provide maximum power while it will allow the pilot to fly the airplane away without having to worry about where the power is set and what is happening. That's all controlled right up through that standby display unit. Touching the auto throttle power button here, you can see what mode it is on this bottom bar. You see I just put it in takeoff mode and it calculated based on the environmental factors for today that our takeoff torque is full torque there, 2230 pounds. Just to activate it, while we would be sitting on the runway, we just press our go round button, auto throttles become engaged, and they move to set the selected power. To disengage, you have a disengage button on the right side, or you can simply just overpower the throttle lever. Our main forms of data entry into the Proline Fusion are one primarily our touch. So we can touch anything in here. I can touch to select the checklist and move on that way. Or down in the center console here, we've got three main panels. The center one being our keyboard. The outer two are our cursor control panels. The left one being the pilot's cursor. The right one's being the co-pilot's cursor. These are alternative methods of entry in case you don't want to have to touch the screens. They're also handy to be able to scroll with and to move and range maps. With the keyboard here, it's a simple scratch pad system. For example, I'll type in the ICT VOR. It'll go into our scratch pad. And then from there, I simply touch where I want that information to go. So if that is going to my FMS, from there, I just touch it from the scratch pad to the destination and paste. Simply choose which one and then execute and you're on your way. One of the nice things about the Fusion is the quick tune functionality of the keyboard down here. For example, if we were given a different squat code, I would simply type that code in, press the quick tune button, and it'll automatically say, hey, that's a potential squat code, and I can just select to put it in the transponder. It'll do the same thing with frequencies for comms or navs. The system is very intelligent and knows what frequencies can be, and it's very simple to use. In the event that you don't want to use the quick tune feature, we also have knobs just like old school radios uh, to control the panel as well. So my personal favorite feature of the Fusion is the integrated checklist. Simply pressing the yoke button on the inside here, it'll bring up the checklist for whatever phase of flight you're in. In case right now I have the before taxi checklist up. By pressing this outermost button, I can now sequence through the checklist and it'll check things, so as I do them, I push the button and it'll checklist through. In the event of a 
memory item or something malfunctioning on the airplane and there's a checklist associated with it, as you can see we have several right now, if I push into the checklist it will automatically bring up the checklist associated with that malfunction. Another addition that we've made to the King Air series recently has been the addition of digital and automatic pressurization. So old are the days of the old whiz wheel where the pilot has to select the cabin altitude. Now it simply looks up and calculates the cabin's altitude based on the flight plan the pilot has put in. So based on the landing field elevation or the landing elevation, it will automatically populate and schedule the cabin for all phases of flight. On the screen here, we can see our cabin altitude, our differential pressure, and our cabin rate. Now just below that, it's worth mentioning we've also digitized the flaps. So we no longer have the three dial indicators above the throttle quadrant and our flaps are fully digital. So when we select a new flap, it will then tell us where the flaps are at. Up top above the flight displays is our flight guidance panel or our autopilot. Easy to operate, very simple in its modes. It's very similar to every other autopilot that is in most other airplanes. We have our vertical modes right here and our lateral modes right here. So we can couple it to a nav course or a heading course or we can couple to a go around procedure if necessary. In the vertical modes we have our flight level change which is a speed relative mode or our vertical speed or we can couple to a VNAV profile. So when talking about the displays here on this MFD I can have up to four individual panes of different information if the situation calls for. As you can see, I have my engine digits and displays there. I have a checklist. I have a tune page and a map. Now that might be a lot of information for most people, but if you ever had a screen fail, you may need to have it all up on one screen. Additionally, one of the more common displays that we have is when we have a map and a chart right next to each other. We use this when taxiing, we use this when flying an approach, or really anytime you need a chart coming up. On the PFDs here, I can also put up our flight plan or our FMS at any time and oftentimes we'll fly around with our flight plan right there in front of us for those quick direct to operations that we might get. Easy to reach from either pilot seat are our USB outlets right here. We have a universal plug or USB so that we can charge any of our devices whether it be an iPad or a phone. Kind of a nice convenience feature when flying some of those longer legs. Located right behind the co-pilot seat are a few storage items that are helpful for the pilot. Areas to put tall objects or the control locks or anything else the pilot might want to tuck away for later on during the flight. 